as the word of God is being preached, there is light coming to you, not light to expose something bad in your life, but light to drive out the darkness, light to drive out the fear, light to be like a laser of light that drives out the sickness and disease, that drives out the soul sickness, that drives out the loneliness, that drives out the anxiety, that drives out the worry. But rise, shine for your light has come. And that's how the glory of the Lord rises upon you. It is the light of God's word entering into your life. It gives understanding and it gives light and it brings change. John chapter 15, verse seven, Jesus says something very powerful. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. You shall ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, notice the secret here or the 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 answer here. The solution here is, first of all, Jesus is not saying there's anything wrong with having desire. So he's actually saying desire is good. He said, because you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. But notice the condition in which your desire will be done for you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Now here, our desires are completely controlled and our desires are completely influenced by what's abiding in us. He said, if my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. Now, listen, if God's words are not abiding in you, your desires are going to be perverted. Your desires are going to be twisted. This is the cause of every crime and every bad decision that a human being ever makes is that they have wrong desires and wrong desires is not because a person is an evil person. In most cases, wrong desires is because of what is abiding in you. Look, he's, he's not saying he's, he's showing us a process here. If you abide in me, that's being born again. Now you're in Christ being born again. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. So your desires will be God blessed desires when you, his words abide in you. What's abiding in you right now? Sometimes anger is abiding in us. Sometimes anxiety is abiding in us. Sometimes fear is abiding in us. Sometimes negativity is abiding in us. Sometimes hatred is abiding in us. Sometimes uh, 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 a sense of inferiority is abiding in us. What's abiding in you is what determines what your desires are. And that's why people have perverted, twisted, lustful desires, because that word, one of the definitions for the word lust is the condition of a diseased soul, the condition of a diseased soul. So twisted or wrong lust, wrong desires, which we call lust, because lust really is the word desire. But when it's when it's when it's um, when it's lust that is contrary to God, what God desires, then it is it is the desires that emerge from the diseased condition of the soul, the diseased condition of the soul. We want soul health. We want soul healing because as a man thinks, so is he. And when the soul prospers, your whole life prospers, the Bible says, right? In third John, verse two, he says, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers or in proportion to your soul's prosperity. But here he talks about desire and he says, if my words abide in you. So the question is, what's abiding in you? Is fear abiding in you? Then your desire is going to be twisted and you're going to you're going to try to obtain your desire in some other way than it being granted to you or it being done for you. So you have to do it for yourself when you have a perverted or twisted desire. But when his words are abiding in you, it causes your desires to be the overflow of God's promises and the overflow of God's word. And you end up desiring what God desires. And when you ask for that, it'll be done for you. But when your 
what, when what's in your what, what's abiding in you is corrupt, when what's abiding in you is wrong thinking, when what's abiding in you is wrong, is emotions that are uncontained and uncontrolled and unchecked with the word of God, then you have twisted, perverted desires and you will and God will not do those for you. Those desires will not be done for you. So you will go and try to do them for yourself at the harm and expense of others and at the harm and expense of your own future. People's souls are suffering in silence and it's time to be healed. People's souls are suffering in silence and it's time to be healed. What is abiding in you? If there's a hole in your soul, there will be holes everywhere else. What's robbing us of our success, what's robbing us of our God given desires and dreams is what's abiding in us. Is there hate? Is there bitterness? Is there fear? Is there selfishness? Is there anxiety? This is called soul sickness, soul sickness. I need to say something to you is very important that you get a hold of this, that mental illness, depression, addiction, alcoholism, sexual crisis, identity crisis, suicidal thoughts. These are not character flaws in a person's life. They are illnesses. They are diseases. Listen to me. These are not character flaws. Well, you just have a character flaw. You just need to work on your character and you won't be an alcoholic. You just need to work on your character and you won't do drugs. You just need to know these are illnesses and these are sicknesses. But here's the thing. It's one thing if I were to say to you, these are illnesses and sicknesses and you'll have to deal with them and you'll just have to stay sick and ill the rest of your life. But Jesus said something different about that in Matthew, chapter four, verse twenty three. And I need you to see this. And Jesus was going through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So we know he was teaching and we know he was preaching. But the third thing we sometimes overlook and forget what he was doing, and that was healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. Jesus heals every kind. Look at what he says. He healed every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. That means physical sickness. That means emotional sickness. That means mental sickness. That means addiction sickness. Jesus is the healer. There is hope in Jesus and soul sickness is where every one of these things emerge from and other things. Being a workaholic flows from soul sickness. Being angry at others flows from soul sickness, mistreating people, treating people like dirt that comes from soul sickness, feeling loneliness comes from soul sickness, feeling hopeless comes from soul sickness. Listen, we're going to be healed in our souls today. At least we're going to start being healed in our souls because listen, this is soul sickness is characterized by feelings of hopelessness and helplessness and you feel incompetent for what you're up against. It involves vague, unexplainable symptoms and soul sickness can be healed. And it starts here. It starts with understanding the value of life and the value of your soul. Jesus said in Mark eight thirty six, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? And we've always thought many Christians have thought, well, that scripture means, you know, uh, hey, why gather things? Because and then you're going to lose your soul if you if you gain the whole world, you'll lose your soul. Well, look, you could have millions and billions of dollars and not lose your soul. And you could be broke. But have lost your soul and going to hell. He's not saying it's wrong to have things. What he's saying is he's making a comparison. He's saying even if you could gain the whole world, that is that does not compare the value of gaining the whole world is not equal to the value of your soul. The value of your soul is so much greater than gaining the whole world. I'm not here to condone your choice. You have the freedom to choose whatever you want to choose, whether you think that's how you're born or whether you think that's a choice. It's irrelevant to me because I'm not here to condone or to judge your choices. I'm here to cultivate your worth, because if I can cultivate your worth 
And I mean like truly cultivate it and truly get you to see how valuable you are, how God ascribes value to you, how God thinks you're worth much, valued much, loved much, approved much, accepted much. We cultivate worth. We cultivate worth. We cultivate worth. And the person who has a cultivated sense of worth will make biblical choices. I'm telling you, folks, there are a lot of people that make biblical choices, but they have low self-worth. Those are choices they make out of fear. They fear so they make the right choice. And God doesn't want you to make the right choice out of fear. He doesn't want you to make the wrong choice, but he doesn't. But God is not looking at your life based on the choices that you make. He's looking at your life based on the value that you place upon yourself, the worth that you place upon yourself, because we need to get our sense of worth from how God views us, not from our color, not from our money uh, or lack of, not from our size, not from our physical appearance, not from our not from whether we're tall or short or skinny or fat or anything in between. Our value and our worth should come from the one who paid for us with his own blood. And when we cultivate that sense of worth, you're a human being. It doesn't matter what color you are. You're a human being. It doesn't matter to me what political party you're from. You're a human being. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. You're a human being. It doesn't matter to me if you're struggling with your gender and struggling with your identity. My job is not to tell you who you are in your physical sense. My job is to tell you who you are in Christ and show you how valuable you are, how much worth you have, and then let your worth, let your cultivated worth determine your choices. How do we break through? How do we break through this this place of darkness? Psalm 119 verse 30 says the entrance of his word brings light as we flood the light of God's word. Listen to me as we flood the light of God's word into our lives, then you will experience the darkness fleeing, loneliness fleeing, depression fleeing. Psalm 119 verse 30 says the entrance of his word brings light. When you're going through a time of darkness, the only solution is light and the entrance of God's word into your heart brings light. God's word coming into your life brings light. God's word is bringing light to your life right now. As the word of God is being preached, there is light coming to you, not light to expose something bad in your life, but light to drive out the darkness, light to drive out the fear, light to be like a laser of light that drives out the sickness and disease, that drives out the soul sickness, that drives out the loneliness, that drives out the anxiety, that drives out the worry. But rise, shine, for your light has come, and that's how the glory of the Lord rises upon you. It is the light of God's word entering into your life. It gives understanding and it gives light and it brings change and it brings clarity and it brings warmth. You think about what light brings. It brings warmth. Light brings direction. You can't go around in the dark. You're going to bump into things all the time. But when there's light, you can get anywhere you need to go. Light is beautiful. Light is warm. Light is healing. Light is loving. Light is God and God is light. And when the entrance of his word comes in, then light comes and darkness flees. You know what? If I'm if I'm going through a time of darkness, I can pray against that darkness. It's not going anywhere. I can fast against that darkness. It's not going anywhere. I can march around that darkness seven times and that darkness is not going to leave. But you know what? If I will just switch the light on, which is as effortless as you can get, you just switch the light on and the darkness flees. That's why he says the entrance of his word brings light. Go back to Psalm 143. Let me wrap this up. Seven steps (laughs) to emotional healing and health in five minutes. Ready? Here we go. (laughs) What does he do when the enemy is pursuing him? Verse four. Look at what he says. My spirit grows faint within me. My heart is dismayed. What is the solution? Verse five. Number one is found in verse five. I will remember the days of long ago. I will meditate on all thy works. So the first step to emotional health and healing is to remember what God has done and to meditate on what he has done, to remember what he's done and meditate on what he's done. Memory and meditation. Remember and meditate. Remember and meditate. You would be surprised if you would realize 
How much of your emotions every day of your life are the result of what you're meditating on? How much your your emotions are the byproduct and the result of what you're remembering? Your memory is powerful. And if you remember the hurt and if you remember the pain and if you remember what people have done to you, then you will feel sad. You will feel bitter. You will feel angry. But if you will remember what God has done, remember his works of long ago. Remember when he healed you. Remember when he healed your kid. Remember when he got you out of that accident. Remember when he got you out of that ticket. Remember when he got you out of that bar. Remember when he got you out of that sickness. Remember when he got you out of that fear. Remember when he got you out of that disease. Remember when he got you out of that bad relationship. Remember, 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 and healing will flow like a river. Number two, I will spread out my hands to you. In verse six, I will spread out my hands to you. What does this speak of? Okay, let me give it to you real quick. I will spread out my hands to you. Oh, man, when you spread out your hands, you're welcoming God's embrace. You're spreading out your hands for a hug. I will spread out my hands to you to embrace God, to embrace his love. I'm spreading out my hands to worship God and adore him. And I'm spreading out my hands to receive what God has for me. I'm spreading out my hands. Hear, hear this now. I'm spreading out my hands to embrace the Lord's embrace. I'm spreading out my hands to worship and adore him. I'm spreading out my hands to receive all that he has for me. I will spread out my hands. This will heal you. You spread out your hands in this way, it'll heal you. Number three, verse seven says, answer me speedily. Answer me quickly, Lord. What does this mean? How do we how do we apply this in our lives? We must expect answers from God. We must expect from God. Hopelessness is a la lack of expectation. The reason we feel hopeless is because we lack expectation. The thing that will give you hope is when you expect God to answer. You expect God to come through. Don't be moved by what you see or what you feel. We walk by faith and not by sight. I will experience God's answer. I'm expecting God to answer. He says, answer me quickly, Lord. Expect an answer quickly. Expect an answer today. If it doesn't come today, when you wake up tomorrow, expect it tomorrow. If it doesn't come tomorrow morning, expect it in the afternoon. If it doesn't come in the afternoon, expect it in the evening. If it doesn't come in the evening, expect it while you're sleeping. If it doesn't come while you're sleeping, expect it when you wake up. If it doesn't come when you wake up, expect it at lunchtime. If it doesn't come at lunchtime, expect it in the mailbox. If it doesn't come in the mailbox, expect it from Amazon. If it doesn't come from Amazon, expect it from UPS. If it doesn't come from UPS, expect it from USPS. If it doesn't come from USPS, expect it from, 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 from DHL. If it doesn't come from DHL, Tell. Expect, 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 expect. This is how you heal your soul. Expect from God, not from people. He doesn't say answer me quickly, husband. He doesn't say answer me quickly, wife. He doesn't say answer me quickly, church. He says answer me quickly, Lord. He doesn't say answer me quickly, government. He doesn't say answer me quickly, politics. He doesn't say answer me click quickly, senator. He doesn't say answer me quickly, president. He says answer me quickly, Lord. Yeah. Woo, you start expecting from God and you'll be healed. Because the only thing that makes our soul sick one of the things that makes our soul sick is when people let us down or we let ourselves down. It doesn't say, it doesn't even say answer me quickly, self. He says answer me quickly, Lord. Number four, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. Oh, you need to wake up every day meditating on God's love. Find a scripture on the love of God. I wrote this thing a few years ago called I will greet this day with God's love in my heart. Number five, he says, show me the way that I shall go in verse eight. In other words, ask God for wisdom. Show me the way. Verse eight says, show me the way that I shall go for I to you. I entrust my life. Show me the way I should go for you. For to you I entrust my life. Show me the way. Show me the way. Ask God for wisdom. Ask him to show you the way. You want to be healed? Get your wisdom from God, not from people. Get your wisdom from God, not from your opinion. Get your wisdom from God, 
not all the experts. There's nothing wrong with learning from people, but we need to get our wisdom from God. Lord, you show me the way that I should go. Everybody's got an opinion of what you should do. Get yours from God. And then number six, teach me to do your will. May your good spirit lead me. We need to welcome and invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and to teach us. Stop being afraid of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we got to stop that. We got to stop being afraid of the Holy Ghost. We got to stop thinking that preachers that talk about the Holy Ghost are, are too crazy for us, too wild for us. Stop being so prideful and invite the Holy Spirit to lead you. If you went to a church where they didn't teach much about the Holy Spirit, I apologize on behalf of the preachers that are afraid that people will leave the church if you talk about tongues and if you talk about the Holy Spirit and if you talk about the baptism of the power of God. I'm sorry, but that's the only way you're going to live victoriously is with the help of the Holy Spirit. No one can do it alone. No one can do it alone. This isn't psychology. This isn't psychology. You can get that without God, but you can't get the Holy Spirit without God. And number seven, I know it's overtime here, but I'm about to kick the field goal and it's going to we're going to win. I'm not hitting the goalpost twice. Um, <laughs> that's a Chicago joke. Uh, verse 11 says, Rem remember, for your namesake, Lord, preserve my life in your righteousness. Bring me out of trouble. OK, now listen to me now. This is the final point. Number seven, the final step to emotional healing and health is embracing the gift of righteousness and use learning to identify with who you are in Christ on the righteousness of God. The opposite of righteousness is shame, guilt, condemnation, self-righteousness, pride. Listen, he says, in your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. Our own righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says, but his righteousness, which he gave us as a gift, will bring us out of every bit of trouble. The righteous will prevail. The righteous will get up when they fall. The righteous can pray and have answers prevail. The righteous move mountains. The righteous are bold. The righteous are walking in divine healing. Identify with the gift of righteousness. Fill your mind with who you are in Christ and you will be healed of soul sickness. Well, you know, I think everyone knows what it's like to feel lonely, depressed and afraid. The pressure against our emotions can be overwhelming at times. Who hasn't felt the waves of darkness try to take over their soul? I know I have. And I really want you to get this. This is the key to your emotional health and healing. You see, remember, our soul is made up of three parts, the mind to think, the heart to feel and the will to decide. And when your soul is sick or unhealthy, it affects those three things which affect everything. When our soul is not prospering and flourishing, it leads to fearful thoughts and feelings and fearful choices. And really, that's everything that life is made of, what we think, how we feel and the things that we decide or choose. So the secret to a great life is simple, having a healthy soul. And the enemy of your soul is trying to paint a hopeless, dark picture of your life. So you become discouraged, lonely and depressed. Maybe you feel like you're in a place like that right now, or perhaps, you know, someone who's in a place like that. That's why in today's program, I've just given you seven steps for your emotional health and healing. Remember the first one? It started with remembering what God has done for you. That's why we need to hear God's word over and over again. God's word abiding in us, because that's what causes us to remember the things he's done for others and to focus on the things he's done for us. That's why I put together this collection of teaching that I know is going to change your life. It's really a soul health, whole health collection. It'll bring healing to your soul and your whole life. Now, my announcer will tell you how to get it. But before I finish today, I want you to know that I'm on a mission to see 30 million souls saved and lives transformed. And your sacrificial gift today will help be used to equip blind people and people that can't read in third world countries and around the world with these solar powered audio Bibles. When you support the ministry and you get the material today, I want to personally thank you by sending you the amazing toolkit, the soul health, whole health healing collection just for you to have this healthy soul. And that's what this whole program is about. So here's my announcer to tell you more and I'll be right back. 
There are an estimated 1 billion people in the world who cannot read and an estimated 39 million who are blind. That is why Gregory Dickow is asking you to stand in faith with him today to make a difference in the lives of these precious people by helping us give them a solar powered audio Bible so that they can hear the word of God in their own language. With your timely gift today of $25 or more, 10 precious people will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. With your generous gift of $50 or more, 20 will have a chance to hear the gospel in their native language. As a special thank you for your support, Gregory Dickow wants to send you his five CD audio series, Seven Secrets to a Healthy Soul, and today's teaching in its entirety for your timely gift of $25. Ask for offer 519A. Or for your very generous gift of $50 or more, he'll include the five CD series, The Kiss of Righteousness, along with his book, Taking Charge of Your Emotions. Ask for offer 519B. Please don't wait. Gregory Dickow needs to hear from you today. Live operators are standing by to take your call. Or you can go online right now to gregorydickow.tv. Well, I want to encourage you and inspire you even to, and even challenge you to do something in the next few moments that will matter for eternity. You see, our Christianity is expressed as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people around the world, but especially those who've been persecuted, helpless, forgotten, and minimized. Jesus said, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done it unto me. That's why I need your rather urgent help today. Your gift makes it possible for me to get these powerful audio Bibles into the hands of precious people who've been forgotten and minimized, people that are blind, people that, that uh, can't read, people in third world countries. By getting this in their hands, they can hear the whole Bible and our greatest teachings that I know will change their lives forever. Now, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person watching today, that you give them hope, that they can have power and health and healing in their soul, in their mind, their heart, in their decisions. Give them healing today. Give them hope that everything can turn around beginning today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now listen, don't forget to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I am there, and I'll do my very best to personally respond to each and every one of you that reaches out. And don't miss our next broadcast. Remember to set your DVR so you never miss one of them. I can't wait to see you then. God bless.